all right student let us start today's topic that is uh, probability lecture 2 so we did uh, probability yesterday as well in the uh, in lecture 1 where we finished till uh, total probability theorem and now we will continue with the total probability theorem to Bayes right so Bayes is basically an extension of total probability theorem so the topic that we are going to cover in this uh, particular lecture is uh, Bayes theorem uh, Bernoulli trials and binomial distribution so this is the uh, today's uh, plan right today's uh, lecture plan okay so these are the topics which we are going to do and uh, most important of them is the base we'll also cover mean and variance of the binomial distribution probability distribution of random variables so these two topics are basically very good for your uh, i i know that board levels right since board is also coming and we also do something of the expectation problem though it is basically a subset of this particular problem only but we'll do still do it separately all right so let's start the topic with base first of all let us try and understand what is base so we did total probability theorem right if you remember so what we did we tried the algo approach right i told you that i'll be going through the algo approach and similarly as we did there i'll follow the algo approach in base also so for example you start an experiment right when you start you have n particular options of doing a step right say these are the options that you people generally can say that these are the options right let me just yeah pull it here so these are the different options that you have of doing that at particular activity so let's say option one is option two this is option three and so on right option four and this is option n and or in fact if you are still wondering what is option let's understand it this way that these are n bags and you need they they have two color balls white balls and black balls and the final thing that the event that has to occur is that you want to draw a black ball so your target is to draw a black ball from each of these various of bags that are going to come in your way right so your target is here if i say the target now is you want to draw something right this is your target let's say this is the target for example the target is to draw a black ball right so then you have n options because there are n box which contains uh, different different uh, red and or whatever black and white balls right so this is something what we want to find so if i asked you total probability so we did yesterday total probability total probability was nothing but this answer how do you obtain the target is called total probability right whereas base is something different so base is something if i have to you know anal uh, if we want to make an analogy so it is analogous you say it could be analogous to conditional probability right what was happening in conditional probability that a particular event has already taken place right and then you wanted to find a probability of other event so in base in base what has happened is the result so target has already happened target has already occurred that is very important uh, you can say distinction point between uh, base and the total probability theorem so total probability was asking what is the probability of obtaining the target or the result right here target has been already obtained this is already given to you in the question it will be given in some or the other statement target has already been has already occurred or obtained already obtained right then it asks you find it occurred through it occurred through a particular option that is what is base theorem that it occurred through a particular option this is the target of base so for example it might ask you that this has already occurred right so let me just tick mark it that this has already occurred no problems they will be asking you that this occurred let's say through option two find the probability that this has occurred when it occurred through path two this is what is base theorem all about so you can say that base theorem can be represented as something that probability result has already occurred right result has already occurred so we if i ask pr this is total probability right whereas base is asking you find the probability that it occurred through path 2 when result has already been obtained so this becomes base right so it is asking you nothing but find the probability that the result was obtained when you you use the option of path 2 right so the main target in base theorem is again to try and form this algo approach okay let's see how we are going to apply the algo approach in base theorem now 
let's take a question on base. It says a man is known to speak truth three out of four times. So the probability of speaking truth is given. So probability that he speaks truth, let's say t is even denoted by truth, is given to be three by four. And the probability that he speaks a lie or a false statement is one by four, right? Okay, this is what is given to you. He throws a die and reports that it is a six. Now this is the event that has happened. So he throws a die and reports that it's a six. So, all right. So now there are two options that whether he is lying or he is telling the truth when he reports something, right? Find the probability that it's actually a six. Now understand what has already occurred. Now when you say that it has been reported that it is a six, that means event has already occurred. So what has occurred? So the PR, so R, the final experiment that was to be done was that six has occurred right that 6 has occurred okay this has already occurred now what do you find have to find is that it occurred all right and in fact he reports a 6 it has uh, something which has been occurred he reports a 6 that is what is the actual result that we have to talk about okay now when he reports a 6 there are two options whether he is telling a truth or he is telling a false statement or basically he is lying to us. There are two options. So now let's draw the algo for this. So in the start he has two options that he speaks truth or he basically lies and either way the event is that he reports a 6. Right? He reports 6. This is what has happened. Alright, so let's fill up the respective probabilities that are given. So for speaking truth, the probability is 3 by 4. For telling a lie, it is 1 by 4. Now if what he has done is that he has thrown a dice, right? A die is being thrown. Now he reports a 6, right? He reports a 6. If he is telling the truth, so then what is the probability that it is the truth statement? So when he has thrown a dice, there are 6 options, right? Dice has 6 options. And only one face will occur and if he is telling the truth then the truth must be probability of telling the truth is 1 by 6 probability of telling a lie is 5 by 6 why because the other five options will be live of which he could actually select all of them so now what is the probability that 6 has been reported so you can report 6 by two paths that is this is the path 1 and this is let's say I denote this is the path 1 and this will be your path 2. So 6 can be reported. 6 can be reported right by two ways. That is path 1 and path 2. So there are two options by which you can report 6. So what is the total probability? Probability that PR, that it has been reported 6, will be what? Path 1 plus path 2. What is the probability of path 1? 3 by 4 into 1 by 6. What is the probability here? 1 by 4 into 5 by 6. So this is the total probability of obtaining the result. So you can just write it here and just multiply to get the final answer. Okay, so simply you can say that it is 8 by 24 or it is nothing but 1 by 3. Let it be 8 by 24 for the time being. But now it was not asked of you to find how in how many ways we can obtain a 6. It is Question is find the probability that it is actually a 6. It is actually a 6. That means if it is actually a 6, that means the person must be what? Person must be speaking truth. Then only it will be actually a 6. So that means you need to find the probability using path 1. So this is what is the favored path. Right. So in a way you can also remember Bayes by something like this. If I want to tell you Bayes. So Bayes is nothing but probability of favorable path divided by sum of probabilities sum of probabilities of all possible paths of all possible paths. Right. This is what is meant by Bayes. So what is your favorable path here? Yes, it is 3 by 4 into 1 by 6 and you have already calculated the total probability that is PR that is 8 by 24. So the answer is nothing but what? 3 by 8. This is the answer we are going to mark in the 
exam. So I hope the I have taken a very basic question. In fact, it is I I suppose it is also included in your NCERT. So to understand how Bayes is applied, so it's a very simple algo here. It's a very simple diagram. So if you can draw the diagram, it will become crystal clear to you what is being asked of you in the question. Let's right, take uh, another problem to understand Bayes. So it says uh, a laboratory test is 99% effective in detecting a certain disease when it is in fact present, right? So when it is present, right? So it is 99% effective in detecting when present, right? Remember, it uh, read the information given in the question very carefully, otherwise you will be misguided. However, the test also yields a false positive result, right? For 0.5% of the healthy persons, 0.5% healthy persons are also detected positive incorrectly by the blood test, right? So if 0.1% of the population actually has the disease, okay, what is the probability that a person has the disease? Now, see, a person has the disease given that. So now you can get the context that whenever something like given that is given, either it will be used in the conditional probability case or in the Bayes theorem. So given that test result is positive. So what has occurred here? Can you tell me what has happened? So the event that occurred E, generally that you define as the result, E that has happened is test result is positive. This has already occurred, that test result is given to be positive by the lab. What you find when this test result is positive, a person has the disease, a person actually has the disease. What you want to prove is that A, that person has the disease, right, person has the disease. So what you actually want to find is that probability A given E has already occurred. This is your target. So again, let's draw the flow diagram of this particular question. So if at the start, I have two genres of people. One is which are, let's say healthy, right? See, it is given here that they, uh, they are, a lot is healthy and the other lot is having disease. So they have, they are diseased right healthy and diseased okay it is also given that how many uh, what is the percentage of population which is healthy actually only 0.1 percent has the disease so that means 99.9 .9 by 100 is the probability that sorry okay yeah so for disease it is just 0.1 right so the probability that he a person that you select at random will be healthy is 99.9 .9 by 100 and this is 0.1 by 100. All right, this is what is given to you. Now the test can occur in two ways that he can detect healthy as positive and it can result negative. For a disease also, it can give a positive result and it can give a negative result, right? So this is the workflow. So for a positive healthy person, the positive result comes out. That means it's a false detection, right? Can you see that it is also given to you? So a laboratory test is 99% effective in detecting a certain disease when it is already present. So when in fact it is present, that means the person is already teased and it comes positive, that means detected, right? Detected, I should say correctly. So it is detected correctly. So that means it happens for 99% cases. So this probability is given to be 99 by 100. Right. So obviously it negative detection will be false negatively detected will be one by hundred over here. Now healthy, let's talk about the healthy. So it says, however, the test also yields a false positive result for 0.5% of healthy person tested. So false positive result for 0.5. So he's healthy, but he will still be detected positive with the test. The probability is 0.5. So you will write 0.5 by hundred and this will be what? 99.5 by 100. So this is the entire workflow. So now whatever was given to you in the English statement, I have converted this into a flow diagram. Now coming to the point that what you were asked to find is that it has been detected, right? So you want E first of all. So what is the total probability if I ask you in this particular case? So total probability will be the cases where the test is showing positive results. So this and this. So these two are the positive result statements that you have to count. So if I ask you what is probability E, what is probability E, so what you will do, this path into this, so that is 
99.9 by 100 into 0 0.5 by 100 plus the other path that is showing positive result is yes this particular path so the, this path and this path is your answer for total probability we will not take the negative cases right so because negative cases is not being asked it is asking the test result is positive so the other is 0 0.1 by 100 into 99 by 100 so this is what is being the total probability that test result is positive now what is asked is that a, you have to find that a person actually has a disease when the test result is positive so which path is that you want yes it is showing saying that person has the disease so that means it is diseased this and this so this path is your favorable path right so this is the favorable path that you people need to find so according to base then the question will be p a e would be given by something like this 0.1 by 100 into 99 by 100 divided by d where d is nothing but this entire value okay so i'm leaving the calculation part for you people uh, you can just calculate because it's uh, gonna take some time and the main part for this particular question was to explain to you how the diagram first of all has to be plotted and how you have to interpret base so base is always you will find a statement like given by or given that right has already occurred right something of this has to be there in the context okay the next question says that a bag contains six white and unknown number of black balls where black ball is given that unknown but they must be less than three so there are six white balls that you people have right six white and the number of black balls is something mysterious here right you do not know so it could be uh, with unknown number of black balls so it could be zero it could be one it could be two or it could be three black balls in the bag right balls are drawn one by one with replacement so it is a question of replacement so whenever you have replacement please highlight it because you have to take replacement into the count from this bag twice so twice so that means two balls are being drawn and is found to be white on both occasions it is found to be white on both occasions right what is the probability that bag has exactly three black balls right so what has already occurred can you explain to me the experiment so in the experiment the final result that has already happened is yes white on both occasions so this is the result that has already occurred or you can say the event so event has already occurred so what was the event that on both occasions event is on both occasions white is obtained on both occasions white is obtained now let's see the flow chart so flow chart is that when you start so i actually see it as a four bag problem what why i am saying four bag you will automatically just understand so this is bag one so i couldn't say that this composition is six white zero black because i do not know what is the exact number of the balls that you have for black this will be six white one black six white two black and this will be six white three black can i say these are four possible options of the bags that you people have and now you want that out of these bags you want to select something where two balls are being drawn right with succession uh, with replacement what do you obtain event e so event that you obtained here is two white balls right this is what is obtained and according to Bayes, you do not want to find the total probability of obtaining two white balls. What you want to find is that you got those white balls when bag had. So had is also another uh, tip for finding the base. Exactly three black balls. So you want that two white balls are drawn from which particular option? Yes. So this is your favorable path this time round. So you want this particular case to happen. So now i hope you can easily solve this question so it remains nothing so what is this particular probability probability of selecting all these bags so i could say these are your bag one bag two bag three bag four so they are equal probability of selecting the bag one by four one by four one by four equally probable because it is not given that uh, which bag or which bag you have to choose from so they are equally probable but after that you want to select two white balls from 
this particular bag how you can do so can you give me an example so let's say this is your bag one let me name it as bag one right this will be your bag two bag three and bag four so now the question is from with replacement so how you are going to do let's see so from bag one if you want to draw two white balls one by one see this is very important if it is given one by one right so if you draw one by one with replacement so let's say we pick first of all one ball one ball the probability of obtaining one ball as white is what here six total balls are also six right so six by six second chance is also six by six so the, in a way it is one obviously it's a sure event because the bag only contains white balls so you will always obtain the white ball right then the other let's say bag two for bag two what is the probability six white and one black so total balls are seven so six by seven for the first ball and for the second ball is again six by seven why because it is a case of replacement for this six by eight into six by eight and for this it will be six by nine into six by nine so if i say what is the probability that event has occurred p e that is this event i call this as my event here right so the probability of the event is nothing but some of the probabilities of all the paths so this is 1 by 4 into 6 into you can say uh, 6 into 6 by 6 this is the first path other path is 1 by 4 6 by 7 into 6 by 7 plus 1 by 4 into 6 by 8 into 6 by 8 plus 1 by 4 into 6 by 9 into 6 by 9. So this is the total probability in fact. If you think properly this is the total probability by which you can obtain two white balls. Right? Total probability of obtaining two white balls. But we are not being asked total probability. We want the favorable path. So we want that bag 4 was being selected. So probability that bag 4 was selected when event has already occurred is nothing but how you will answer this yes the probability of the path 1 by 4 into 6 by 9 into 6 by 9 whole divided by probability e that is this entire value here this is the particular answer that we need to find out okay so again i am leaving the calculation part for you people so that we can save time in the video just solve it understand the concept and move ahead Let's take another problem on base. Uh, it says in a test, an examinee either guesses, copies, or knows. So it is not off, it is knows. So there are three options for uh, people like you that either you guess, you copy, which is highly un not advisable in the IIT exam, or he knows, right? There are three options. So if I have to start off, yes, I know that uh, my flow chart will be divided into three particular cases that is, guesses g for guess uh, copies or he knows the answer to the particular multiple choice problem with four options each the probability that he makes a guess is 1 by 3 so it is given that he guesses the answer is 1 by 3 and the probability that he copies the answer is 1 by 6 this is also given to us the probability that his answer is correct given that he so now understand this so given that so given that he copied it right so that means it's a conditional case i'll just show you where to use it then let's just read on further find the probability that he knew the answer to the question given that he answered again given that right given that he correctly answered it so what event has already occurred that is after correct uh, after given that statement given that he correctly answered it so what has happened actually is answered correctly correctly answered this has actually happened so he answered the question correctly and he can do this by all these three mediums right so this has actually happened in the case that you have at hand so now you just need to fill out the particular uh, values here so now let's see what is left so we need to fill out this uh, 1 by 8 also somewhere this 1 by 8 the probability that his answer is correct given that he copied so this particular path is 1 by 8 right now three paths are left for which probability is not given right so let's see how we are going to solve this particular question now and what is asked is 
he knew the answer to the question given that he correctly so which path is asked he knew the answer so he knew the answer is this particular path so this is your favorable path which is being asked right so first of all but we need to find out this particular probability here so there are three options right he guesses so probability of guess plus probability of copying plus probability of nose should be equal to one because that is total probability these are the three ways that he can answer the question so you can easily find the probability that he knew the answer right so this is certainly like this which is nothing but one by two so the first step is that you know that he knows the answer is one by two now you want to find the probability that when he has guessed the answer to the guessed problem is correct so it is a multiple choice question that is what you people obtain in uh, engineering entrance exam is a four options if you want to guess in how many ways it will be correct one by four because out of those four answers one would be correct right and if you know the answer in what is the probability that you will answer it correctly it's a sure event right you don't have to think about it it is a sure event why because you knew the answer so you will obviously answer it correctly right why you will mark something wrong there right so this is now completely given to you so the you just need to find the probability of the event let me define that e is that he answered correctly let me define the e event answered correctly so this is nothing but probability of this path that is again so now i hope by taking so many examples the process that i wanted to highlight is clear to you people right this is nothing but 1 by 2 and probability that he knows when event has already occurred would be what favorable path so your favorable path is 1 by 2 by into 1 divided by again this whole probability e this is the answer we were trying to find right okay so just think of how to put all those values on these particular paths find the total probability and find the suitable path divide them that is what is base all about let's take a past year iit problem to again uh, highlight the base concept uh, it says a signal which can be green or red with the respectability is, is given so probability that a signal will be green is given to be 4 by 5 and the signal will be red is given to be 1 by 5 this is given to us it received by station a and then transmitted to station b so signal is coming and it is being transmitted that is the process so a signal comes from the source received by a and transmitted to station b the probability that each station receive the signal correctly is 3 by 4 so receiving correctly is something different right so here is the twist in the question receiving can be done in two ways you can receive correctly that is given to be 3 by 4 or you can do it incorrect way also right incorrectly is done by 1 by 4 obviously right so this is what is given to you so if the signal received at station b is green then you have to find the probability that original signal was green so what event has already occurred so event that has occurred is that station b has received a green signal so event if i have to define e e is b received b received green signal right b received green so let's see and start with the flow chart how we can obtain green at b so for example at the start that is the source you will start with red signal let's say and or green signal right this is what is being transmitted so they are transmitted and they received by let's say this is your station at this point of time this is station a so station a receives red or there is a false possibility that station a receives green similarly here a station a could obtain again red or a station yes got it so this is station a probability now let me just start pulling the values also for you guys so it is given red red is 1 by 5 green is 4 by 5 right receive correctly so if it was red and you received red the probability is 3 by 4 so this path is 3 by 4 and this path is 1 by 4 green and the signal also received is green is the probability is 3 by 4 and this is again incorrectly received as this right now this signal can be further transmitted to b 
right so for b i would say that b can also receive correctly or incorrectly so though the station a has red it could give b red also and it could give b green also so this layer is for station b right similarly here it could be b r and b g same here b r b g right and this is also b r and b g this is what is the flow chart complete and again if i have to fill the probabilities let's say to this particular tire red and you obtain red the probability is 3 by 4 that means you accepted it correctly here again you have 1 by 4 it was green and you accepted uh, the transmitted signal was also received as green 3 by 4 1 by 4 red and you obtain red is 3 by 4 red but you obtained green is probability 1 by 4 green but you obtained red is 1 by 4 green and you obtained green is 3 by 4 so this is the actual flow chart the event that has occurred is that uh, you want b received green right now let's talk about that point now b received green so b received green here 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 so in fact if you see there are total eight ways by eight possible signals which b station can receive out of which four will be green and four will be red right so the paths that you want now what is total probability then can you define what is the total probability probability e then okay let us just highlight now first this path right okay the probability of this path is 1 by 5 into 3 by 4 into 1 by 4 then you also receive this b this is this path what is the probability 1 by 5 into 1 by 4 into 3 by 4 let's go on the other side so this is green then you have this and this particular path right so this is 4 by 5 into 1 by 4 into 1 by 4 and the last path that you can say is this particular path right so these are your total probability paths that is how you can actually receive a green signal at b right so this is how this has to be calculated 3 by 4 into 3 by 4 and if you calculate this completely your answer will come out to be 23 by 40 right this is what you will obtain but what you people are asked now let's go to that you are not asked the total probability you are asked then find that original signal was green so you obtain a green signal at b when original signal was green so original signal is here you want that when the original signal was green what is the probability so in fact for base now so in let's apply the base for base you want the favorable part divided by pe you have that you have already calculated so if i say there were four paths the original signal is green has two favorable paths which one this green and this green so what we will do here is that we will have to add them up so what will happen let's say the first path favorable path is 4 by 5 into 1 by 4 and 1 by 4 here and the other favorable path is 4 by 5 3 by 4 and 3 by 4 this is your favorable chances right and then you will divide it with the total probability so it might be possible that your favorable paths are more than one because in the previous questions that we have seen favorable path was only one here there are two favorable paths so do not worry about it all right so just calculate this to get your particular answer okay answer which you should be looking for is nothing but 20 by 23 is the answer you can obtain also you can check it from the past year problem it's a beautiful past year problem to understand how bayes theorem actually works now let's understand the concept of bernoulli trials and binomial distribution so i have written the definition on the screen so each time we toss a coin or roll a dice that is called a trial the outcome of a trial is independent of the outcome of any other trial so for example if you toss a coin four times so all probability of the events that is four trials or you can say four 
tosses are completely independent of toss 1 is completely independent of toss 3. Toss 4 is independent of what happened on toss 3, right? In such cases, the probability of success or the failure remains constant. That's it's very important. So, uh, whenever you toss a coin, the probability that you will obtain a head is same. Whether you uh, keep tossing it 10 times, 100 times, right? So, it remains same. Even the 100th time, the probability will be 1 by 2, right? Such independent events which has only two outcomes, right, which is one would be obviously if they have two outcomes, will one will be out of them will be a success or you can say it is as a failure is known as Bernoulli trials, right? It has only two outcomes, okay? So they are called Bernoulli trials, okay? And binomial distribution is and how many ways we can do it, that is binomial, uh, binomial distribution of obtaining the total probability as one. A binomial distribution with n by, by Bernoulli trials and probability of success in each as p is given by b n p. So for binomial distribution, understand it this way that a event, there is an event, right, which has two outcomes, that is success and failure, success and failure, right, okay, and it is repeated n times repeated n times okay so why we are saying binomial because bi stands for two so these are the two only possibilities of that particular event and it is being repeated n times so distribution is it is being distributed in times in n times so that total probability becomes one so if something of b n p is given that means event occurred n times event repeated n times and the probability of success in each trial, so P is success probability, success probability for each trial you can say, for each trial, because for uh, in every trial the probability remains the same, right? This is what is binomial distribution. Let's see how we apply this into the questions. Let's take this example to understand uh, the concept of binomial distribution. It says in an examination 10 multiple uh, type questions are there. but what is multiple choice questions category? One or more can be correct. That is what you obtain at your ITJ advance, not at the J mains, right? So that means a question which has four options, right? So let's say uh, question has four options, four options out of which how many can be correct? So in a single choice question, only one is correct. Here you have all the possibilities that one could be correct, three could be correct, or all four could be correct. So this is the possibilities that you have. So for example, in a single choice question, in a single correct question, single correct or single choice, single choice correct, what do you used to say that probability of getting it right is one by four because out of four, only one will be true. Here, probability will not be one by four. So if you start something saying that he can answer a particular question, the probability of answering correctly is not equal to 1 by 4, first of all. This was true when it was a single choice question. So how you are going to solve is that for, if there is only one option correct, right? So it could be done in 4C1 ways because there are four options. Two options correct, 4C2, that is A, B, B, C pair, right? C, A pair, whatever. Three options correct is 4C3 and all four correct, there is only one case, A, B, C, D. So this is 4. This is 6, this is again 4, and this is 1. So, in, if you total them, there are that means there are 15 ways in which a possible answer could be there, right? Either it could be 1 correct, it could be 2. You do not know how many, uh, in a multiple choice question, you are never sure how many answers are correct. It could be that it could be only a single choice. Two options could be correct, three could be correct, or all four could be correct. So that means the total sample space for a particular question is 15. So in this particular type, only one option would be correct, right? Out of these 15 cases, so in a way, you can mark the answer in 15 ways. This is what is meant by here. You can have 15 ways of marking a multiple choice question. That is why it is called as one of the tough, toughest questions in ITJ advance. So now the probability of getting correct a question becomes 1 upon 1 by 15 and what would be the probability then of doing it incorrectly right incorrect IC let's say then it will be 14 by 15 so how it becomes a binomial or Bernoulli trial is that you can say this is 
the probability of success and this is the probability of failure. The failure is obviously huge because it has 14 particular options but it becomes a binomial why because there are only two options either you will answer it correctly or you will answer it incorrectly. So I will say probability of success always is P and I will call probability of failure as Q. So let me call P and Q and this is now this. Now there are four such, uh, there are 10 such uh, questions. So that means this event is occurring, uh, uh, you know, 10 times. So this event is repeated 10 times for each question repeated 10 times. You will do this activity, right? And you want that he gets exactly two questions correct. So now let me just reduce the question to un make it uh, understandable for you. Let's say there were four questions, right? And you want to answer two correctly. So in how many ways you can do so? Let's see. Correct, incorrect, correct, incorrect. One option. Second option is CCII, right? Then you could have also done CIIC and what could be the other one? So these are could the, these are all the possible cases, right? There could be six possible cases which I can draw here, right? And there will be six cases. How you can say that there are six cases? How you have done? You have selected in four cases, in four questions, out of four you want two correct, then two will be wrong. So four C2. So that means if you want the event to occur, out of n times you want the event to occur, let's say p times. So the selection has to be done as n c p times right so how you are going to do this particular problem and you can remember this as a formula also so n c r is the time which the event is going to be successful so r is number of times successful event is conducted successful event right is conducted into probability p raised to power r that is p raised to power r into q raised to power n minus r. So these cases are for those cases where you were not successful. That means n minus r cases will be that they, where you will be unsuccessful. So for example, you want two questions correct. So out of 10, you can choose any two because you do not know at what position you will answer correctly. So that is 10 C2. So for example, there were 10 questions out of which you have to select two. In how many ways you can do so? 10 C2, right? Out of which two will be correct. So that means 1 by 15 2 and yes 14 by 15 will be the probability for 8 questions so that multiply by 8 or raised to power 8. Notice that the powers if you add the power it should come out to be equal to n. So this is basically the probability that you were looking for and this is the perfect example to explain binomial distribution. Okay now let's take other questions. It says a family has three children. Event A is that family has at most one boy. B is that it has at least one boy and one girl. It says event C is that family has at most one girl. So f find whether events A and B are independent. Also find whether events A, B, C are independent or not. That is what you have to check. So now let's uh, first of all draw cases, right? So there are three children. So all three can be boys, right? Other case could be two boys and one girl. Third case could be one boy two girls and the last case could be three girls. This is the total cases that we can form. Now let's find out the respective uh, probabilities of these cases. So three boys, right? So three boys are there. So that means out of three, all of the three, let's say we select boys and what is the probability of getting a boy? It is equally likely, right? So whether it is a boy or a girl, so probability of getting a boy, right? Probability of getting a boy we do not know so it, if it is not get given probability of getting a boy is 1 by 2 and similarly probability of getting a girl then will be again same they are equally probable events right and why 3c3 because out of all the three times that a baby was born it was a boy now it is said that out of these three children two are boys so we do not know on what occasion the boy was there so 3c2 is for boy then 1 by 2 and raised to power 1 by 2. Similarly, 3C1, 1 is the number of boys that we have taken. So this is 1 and now the girl's probability will be, yes, squared. And this is 3C0, no boy, right? Sorry, this is again 1 by 2. 
Okay, so these are the individual probabilities and if you click the answer, this will be 1 by 8, this is, uh, yes, 3 by 8, this is also 3 by 8 and this is again 1 by 8. And if you add them, if you can see that this total probability comes out to be 1. If you add them, this comes out to be 1. That means we have covered all the cases that could be there. This is the total probability. Now let's talk about event A. Now your event A, what is event A? Let's see, family has at most one boy at most one boy so what is at most one by uh, what all cases will be satisfied can you tell me what all cases at most one by that means boys which are a uh, maximum value of a boy could be one so cases three and four case three and four are satisfying so what is the probability three by eight plus one by eight that is four by eight nothing but we can say one by two similarly let's talk about event b event b is saying family has at least one boy and one girl right at least at least one boy and girl right so what all favorable cases are there these two are the favorable cases that is case 2 and 3 what is the total probability 3 by 8 plus 3 by 8 you can say 3 by 8 plus 3 by 8 so this gives us 6 by 8 right let's talk about C C is at most one girl so it is completely similar to at most uh, one boy so but only the cases will change now so at most one girl so that means you can have the maximum number of girls as one so this will be case one and case two so case one and two so what is the total probability again if you add them up yes it is four by eight right now you have got the answers now what you were asked whether find a and b are independent or not so if you want to find something that they are independent, so you want probability, so independent is basically checked by this, so two events are independent, then A intersection B is nothing but PA into PB, right? You know the values of PA and PB, right? Just put them up. So PA is 4 by 8, PB is uh, what? 6 by 8, right? So you, you know this values, right? So this is, this will come out to be what? 3 by 8? So if the LHS also comes to be 3 by 8, we can say that they are independent events. So let's see what is A intersection B. So A intersection B, that means a case which is common to both of them. So A has case 3 and case 4, B has case 2 and case 3. So which is the common case? Yes, case 3, right? So case 3, what is the probability? So for case 3, the probability is, yes, can you see here, case 3, 3 by 8 that implies LHS is equal to RHS, I can say A and B are independent events. Absolutely. Okay. Similarly, you can try and find whether A, B, C are independent or not. So you want to find something of this sort, right? P A into P B into P C. We will obtain some value of P A into P B into P C, but let's first of all try this particular case. So for this, you want a case which is common to both A, B and in fact C also. So this is A and B have 3 in common but it does not have anything common with C. So LHS is nothing but 0. Whereas this particular value is not equal to 0. So I will say this case is not independent. So A and B are independent but all taken at a time are not independent. Okay. Okay, now let's take another concept, uh, another question to understand binomial distribution. It says, how many times must a man toss a fair coin? So the probability of having at least one head is more than 90%. So coin is being tossed, right? Coin is being tossed, which is have two cases, uh, success you can say, right? Success and failure. Again, it's a binomial thing, right? Because it has only two outputs or two, in, uh, uh, you can say. So having at least one head so we call head as the success because it's on based on head and uh, failure will be let's say tails right this is what we can say you want that at least one head should come right so let's say he tosses and tosses are being done we need to find the minimum value of n for which the probability of having at least one head at least one head is more than 90 by 100 that is what you want so now first of all try and understand how you solve probability at least one at least one head right that is what you want to try 
this can be solved by simply saying total probability that will be 1 minus probability when no head is there this is how you solve at least one case is always remember right because at least one if you try and solve this is very cumbersome it could be one head right it could be two heads three heads four heads and this process will go on it's an infinite process n heads right so we cannot keep making n cases so this would have been n cases and we cannot do this okay so we'll skip this part and we'll go to one minus probability no head the question then directly converted to p no head in n trials right in n bernoulli trials should be greater than 9 by 10 this is what you want here so no head in n cases so that means no success in c0 what is the probability of getting a head is 1 by 0 0 and you, all it should go to what failure that is n this should be greater than this is what you want and this actually becomes what 1 minus 1 by 2 raised to power n greater than n by uh, 9 by 10 right and if you solve this this becomes 1 by 2 raised to power n less than 1 by 10 this is what you will obtain here and since it is in denominator numerators are same you can say this is something like this right so this can be said that this will be smaller when 2 raised to power n is greater than 10 so the minimum value of n that satisfies this is n should be equal to if you start putting in equal to 4 so if minimum trials if I ask so at least one head so that means coin should be tossed coin should be tossed four times at least right tossed four times at least to make the probability of getting at least one head more than 90 percent that is how this question has to be uh, attempted so n has to be greater than or equal to 4 if somebody asks you right number of trials now let's take the next problem say suppose x has a binomial distribution which is given by something like this b 6 comma 1 by 2 so i have already explained to you what does this mean in that the trial was attempted six times that is the bernoulli trial right six times this activity was done and the probability of success is nothing but 1 by 2 and the probability of failure then would be also 1 by 2 now you want to show that show that x equal to 3 is the most likely outcome right what do you understand by most likely outcome that means probability for x equal to 3 right will be maximum this is what you want to prove this is what is meant by this statement right will be most likely mean that the probability obviously will be the highest so if i talk about any probability let's say px right where x takes different different values right so basically this is a question on random variable we which we are going to uh, do don't worry about this right so random variable x is here which can take how many values can you tell me so it could be 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so this actually represents the number of times number of times success was achieved success achieved right you can understand it this way so it could be that you do not achieve a success you always time the uh, so understand it this way that there is a coin and it could uh, for coin success is measured when uh, you get a head right and we call this a failure when whenever you get a tail right this is what is meant by this so x is basically number of heads that you obtain so for example p0 here would mean then uh, something like zero head so for zero head what you will write 6c 0 1 by 2 raised to power what 0 and 1 by 2 raised to power 6 right so if I talk about P1, this will be one head, right? And this would be what? 6 C1, 1 by 2 raised to power 1 and 1 by 2 raised to power 5. That is, this is how you will write. And what will be P3? That is when X is equal to 3. That means three heads. That is how we have converted the question. So this will be 6 C3, 1 by 2 raised to power 3, 1 by 2 raised to power 3. If you now notice in entire, so last one we can say that for uh, six heads, right for six heads what we can say is that 6 c 6 1 by 2 raised to power 6 1 by 2 raised to power 0 all of the will be heads and there will be no tail so if you see this completely becomes 1 by 2 raised to power 6 so every every case will have 1 by 2 raised to power 6 because the probability of p and q are both equal so this is somewhere sorry this is 2 and this will be 3 so this becomes 6 c 6 raised to power 1 by 2 now you want out of these six figures which are going to come here 
which is the greatest which is the most likely outcome and we want to prove that at x equal to 3 this becomes the highest so you can see that the only difference in these terms is their binomial coefficients x1 c1 2 and uh, so on right so the which one will be the maximum of these will give you the highest answer so you have 6c0 6c1 6c2 6c3 6c4 6c5 and 6c6 so how many terms are there can you see that in this binomial yes seven seven terms and by binomial we know that the middle coefficient the middle binomial coefficient is the largest binomial coefficient so 6c3 is the largest binomial coefficient which we know about just take the binomial video if you want to make sure that what i'm talking about so just remember that the highest binomial coefficient is the given by the middle term middle term coefficient right so this is nothing but 6c3 will be maximum that is what we wanted to prove so this implies 6c3 will be max so hence the probability that this implies hence px equal to 3 will be max right i hope the question is clear so if we talk about the mean and variance of a binomial distribution there is a straightforward formula that uh, if binomial distribution is there so first of all for binomial distribution we know that there are only two outcomes possible success and failure where p is the probability of success here right probability of success and we generally denote q by a probability of failure right so if you want the mean so mean is given by np and the variance is given by np q you do not need to calculate it by using you know random uh, distribution table which i will show you just now so let's take an example here it says that a dice is being thrown four times so this is four times a dice is thrown uh, if a total of 9 in a single throw is considered a success, so mm, sum of 9 is considered a success. So how can you obtain uh, 9? Can you tell me? So it will be 3, 6, it will be 4, 5, right? And it could be 5, 4 and it could be 6, 3, right? In a single throw. There is no other way that you can obtain a 9. So there are 4 cases, right? So the probability would be what? 4 by 36 so probability that 9 occurs is nothing but 4 by 36 and I'll call this as P why because this is the success you call this as success right and what will be then value of Q here so then I can say Q is 32 by 36 accepted so then find the mean and the variance so we have already done the formula so if you want to calculate the mean it is nothing but NP so how many times the event has occurred 4 times so n is nothing but here 4 just put the values and solve so n is equal to 4 this is what we know so this actually becomes 4 uh, into 4 by 36 that's it that's how the that's how simple this question is so mean is nothing but 4 by 9 and for variance what you people can do is nothing but n into p into q so 4 into 4 by 36 into 32 by 36 so just calculate this so this becomes what um, this will be 9 this will be 9 so you can say 1 by 9 into 32 by 9 or you can say 32 by 81 so this is the answers that we were looking for okay okay let's take another question on the mean and variance of a binomial distribution so it says that um, difference between mean and variance of a binomial variate is 1 okay so let's say we say mean is m and the variance is uh, this this is given to be difference is given to be 1 so what is mean is we know that mean is np and this is npq is given to be 1 or we can simplify that np into 1 minus q is given to be 1 this is the first equation that is given to you okay now let's go ahead the difference between their squares is 11 now this is given also so that n square p square minus n square p square q square is given to be 11 right and if you want to solve this this further ahead becomes n square p square common 1 minus uh, q square p square is equal to 11 so this is also given to you second thing find the probability of getting exactly three successes that is what you want to find so you want to find when x is equal to 3 right p3 that is p x is equal to 3 so for that you will need to find out n p and q so how you can do so 
so now there are three variables here the problem is that we have three variables which are n p and q and we only have two equations till now we need three equations so the third equation is quite obvious right we know that the probability of success plus failure is nothing but total probability so this is your third equation that you can use so now you can just use one and two to find your answer first of all so if i square the first one this becomes one minus q whole square equal to one and i'll divide using uh, this particular quantity over here right so if i divide so this becomes one by q square upon one minus q whole square is equal to 11 so what i can say that one minus q square will w w what you can write like this now so this will be what one plus q upon one minus q is equal to 11 right so if you solve q will get out to be 10 by 12 which is nothing but 5 by 6 this implies q if q is 5 by 6 this implies p is yes p is 1 by 6 now you just can put the values of p q here to find the value of n so n will come out to be 36 so n comes out to be 36 here so n is here p is with you and uh, q is with you right you want to find p x equal to 3 so that means out of 36 events you want only 3 successes so that is p cube raised to power q raised to power 33 this is what you want to achieve there is 36 3 3 uh, p is 1 by 6 raised to power 3 5 by 6 raised to power 33 this is the answer we are looking for that's it okay so i hope the question is clear to you guys now let's take the CBC or the board level concept which is probability distribution of a random variable so a random variable is basically the possible all possible uh, uh, outputs that event can have we call that a random variable and uh, three things that we have to study the mean variance and the standard deviation of the random variable so how you calculate mean is summation xi pi so xi is nothing but the value of uh, a random variable value of a random variable here right and what is pi it's the probability respective to this particular random variable right you multiply for each of the random variables will add them and you will get the mean or in very important term for mean is expected value or expectation right variance is nothing but uh, the, uh, there is a different formula for variance but we are doing by a shortcut method and we are saving our time here so this is the shortcut method where this particular formula is known as ex first of all so this is mean so we call this as ex summation xi pi right variance is given by e x square minus mean whole square right so this is basically your variance so if i have to elaborate a bit on this x square so what do you mean by x square here is that it will be summation xi square pi minus summation xi pi whole square this is how you are going to write so this is the uh, variance here sorry this is not the variable just check it out so this is uh, variance right this is variance and standard uh, division has no other formula but uh, sigma x is nothing but that is under root variance so you have to calculate variance and take the under root to get the value of standard deviation and understand that variance is always a positive quantity is always positive it, you cannot get a value negative right though for uh, expectation and mean you can get a negative value but for variance you will uh, never find a negative value similarly then standard deviation will always be positive because yes uh, variance is always positive okay and we will do this in statistics that uh, the, the uh, mean is the loosest form to you know talk about a group data Variance is a uh, much more better way of uh, talking about our data and standard division is even better than that. Alright, so let's start with the question and see them uh, see their application. Now let's say take a beautiful problem to understand first of all how you actually decide on what is a random variable. So here it is given that two numbers are selected at random without replacement from first six positive integers. So that means the set that is available to you let's say A. Uh, comprises of 1 2 3 4 and 5 and 6 right you pick any two from them without replacement that means uh, yes two numbers out of this 
and let x denote so now x whenever you say so x is basically generally we say the random variable right x is the generally the random variable so x denotes the larger of the two numbers you have to find e x that is mean of this all right we'll also talk about variance let's say we'll also try and find the variance right but first of all let's talk about mean so x is the random variable where x is the larger of two numbers right larger of two numbers so can you tell me what will be the starting value of x so how we do this is that we draw a rand a distribution table probability distribution table so what is the starting value of x can x take 0 tell me no it is not possible because 0 is not even in our set right so we'll not talk about then the next value that we can think of is that x is equal to 1 and let's say this is x i and we'll take this probability i that what is the probability when x is equal to 1 so x is equal to 1 that means larger of the numbers is 1 so that is not possible right so it is 0 okay larger of the numbers is 2 yes now this makes sense because when this pro when is this possible when you pick 1 and 2 right when you pick 1 and 2 this is quite possible right similarly we can talk about 3 also x is equal to 3 then we, you can have 1 comma 3 then 3 will be the larger number then you can have 2 comma 3 which will be the larger number similarly 4 4 will have how many case 1 comma 4 uh, this will be sorry uh, 4 comma 2 could be the larger one and 4 comma 3 right similarly 5 now you're getting the point so 1 comma 5 could be selected 2 comma 5 could be there 3 comma 5 and 4 comma 5 could be there and similarly for 6 these are the favorable cases and if you talk about 6 uh, if you select any of this particular cases 6 will be the larger number now we want to talk about the probability here right so probability so you want to pick how many numbers two numbers are to be selected out of 6 so what is the sample space what is the sample space can you tell me what is the sample space the sample space is 6 e2 which is nothing but 15 right so how many what is the probability that x is equal to 1 is only there is only one favorable case and total cases are 15 so the probability that you are going to write is 1 by 15 here for 3 there are two favorable cases out of 15 right this 3 out of 15 4 out of 15 plus 5 out of 15 so this is actually you can say that this is probability distribution table for this particular random variable and interestingly if you do one thing that if you want to do summation of all this that if I say summation pi you will always note that summation pi should always come to be one very important rule very important if it is not coming that means you have missed some particular case so the, some value of x is missing so for example 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 will give you 15 that means we have covered all the possible values of the random variable right now our target is to find the expectation so expectation is nothing so e x is nothing but what we have done is some summation x i p i so x i so this is x i and this is p i so this is 2 into 1 by 15 plus 3 into 2 by 15 plus 4 into yes so this is how you are going to find the value of expectation that is 5 into 4 by 15 plus 6 into 5 by 15 so this is the value of expectation or you can say the mean value if we were to ask the variance right variance of x so for variance of x we need two particular quantities what e of x square minus e x whole square so you have already got the e x right so this is the value that you will use here right so I just draw a dotted signal so this is the value so what we are going to do for x square so what do you mean by this I'll explain it in this particular question itself summation x i square this so what we are going to do is square this and then multiply with this so for example this will be what 4 into 1 by 15 plus this will be what 9 into 2 by 15 and so on so I, I, I hope you have got the point now 3 by 15 then you have 5 square that is 25 into 4 by 15 and the last one is 6 square that is 36 into 
5 by 15. So, this is what is value of e x square. Then you will subtract it from the, let's say if this comes out to be p, then you will do p square here and subtract it. Okay. So, this is how variance is found. I hope the particular problem is clear to you. So, let's take the next problem. It says the class has 15 students whose ages are as below. And if we start counting, so let's see how much uh, 14 is getting repeated. 14 once, second. Okay. So, 14 is getting twice. So, try and make the table something like this. Okay. So, this is how the uh, group data is being, uh, this is the frequency of the ages, right? You can say so. So, one student is selected in such a manner that each has the same chance of being chosen. So, that means uh, all the 15 students have the equal probability. So, there are 15 students. So, the probability of each student being selected is 1 by 15. This is what is the meaning. The random variable x. Now, what is the random variable x that is being defined here? Age x of the selected student is called the random variable. So, random variable x. So, x here is nothing but age of the student which we have already plotted on the left hand side right so the values that x can take will be 14 uh, something like this 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 and 21 right these are the values of x and correspondingly then you will try to pick out its probability because that is probability distribution table you have to find you have to find mean variance and whatever is required so for 14 so what is the probability that 14 will come out so 14 is getting repeated 2, so this becomes, yes, 2 by 15. Very simple stuff, right? 15 is getting 1 time repeated. 16 is 2 by 15. Similarly, 17 is 3 by 15. 18 is 1 by 15. 19 is uh, 2 by 15. 20 is 3 by 15. And 21 is 1 by 15. So these are the respective probabilities, right? And if you see that if you all should add all the probabilities, summation... Uh, pi should always be equal to 1 all right always make that sure now you want to find the mean so i hope now you people are clear with this so you want to find the expected value of x so this is nothing but summation xi pi so what the value would be yes so value of x now will be used as 14 so the calculation could be lengthy but yes it will fetch you four or marks in completely in your uh, cbse boards right 15 like this plus 16 into 2 by 15 so I am leaving this part for you guys to solve this particular uh, problem then okay and this will go on till last 21 so 21 is nothing but 21 into 1 by 15 so this is the mean and for variance so for variance we know uh, we need to calculate what e of x square minus e x uh, whole square right so we need to calculate e of x square as well which is nothing but summation uh, x i square p i so you can do this also right this is nothing but 14 square into 2 by 15 so this is how you will calculate 15 square into 1 by 15 so obviously it's a bit lengthy to solve these kind of problems but yes uh, that is why i'm saying that this is uh, only important from the perspective of your boards which will be as it a four marks problem to you okay this will be the value put the value here solve for it and uh, go ahead and do it i'm leaving the calculation part it's again an ncrt problem so you can just check it with your ncrt for the answers and uh, match them along let's take some interesting problem on the expectation that is the mean that you uh, you generally uh, find and uh, find it application in game based problems so this is something really interesting and that you use in a daily life to life problems so it says a fair dice is tossed if two three five comes the player wins the number of rupees so that means if two comes you will get two rupees if three comes you will get uh, three rupees and five comes you will get five rupees but one four or six come the player loses that number of rupees so in fact if you uh, the dice shows one you will have to give one four four rupees will be uh, taken from you and six six rupees will be taken from you so now what is uh, the possible playoffs for the player so playoff means what is the mean or the expectation that the player can expect from the game whether what are the chances of winning or losing that is what we want to try so for example so again what is the random variable here can you tell me what is the random variable here so random variable so we are talking about the playoff right playoff is basically here all about money right you are playing a game let's say it's a gamble that you are doing so money so how much money uh, different different values of money that you have at hand so here you can win plus 2 that you add 2 to your pocket 3 to your pocket you can add 5 to your pocket 
but at the same time you can have minus 1 minus 4 and minus 6 to your pocket so for me these are all your expectation values right oh, uh, not the expectation value but the values that a random variable can take right so if I am going to talk about money these are the respective value of money that are involved in the game so X if I talk about can take all these values okay so X can take uh, 2 it will can fetch you 5 more uh, 5 rupees can fetch you uh, 3 also it can take away my uh, 1 rupee 4 rupee can be taken from you and 6 rupees right so all these will be done when respective numbers come in so die shows 3 5 die shows not minus 1 but 1 4 and 6 so what are the respective probabilities of occurrence if I write pi so 2 occurs at 1 by 6 probability that 3 occurs is 1 by 6 5 occurs is 1 by 6 so all of them is 1 by 6 we know that right so now you want the expectation right so you can do the, just this particular value here okay so if you do this now let's see what value you are going to use 2 into 1 by 6 plus uh, 3 into 1 by 6 plus 5 into 1 by 6 now the next value that you are going to use will be minus because you are going to multiply these two things so this will be sorry so this will be minus of 1 into 1 by 6 then you have minus 4 into 1 by 6 and then you have minus 6 into 1 by 6 so these are the values or uh, that you will use for the calculation and if you calculate this completely your answer will come out to be minus 1 by 6 which is something very interesting so you can see here the value of the mean can be negative that's not a problem so mean can be negative you are getting a negative mean so when you get a negative mean that means this implies player should not play this game that is the trade-off should not play the game because the expectation is that he will lose that is how all the gambling is done basically in real life so players should not play the game so players should play the game the answer is no he should not play the game because the trade-off that he will win is on the negative side so that means he should not that is what was asked of you in the problem Let's take the next problem. It says a purse contains four coins, each of which is either a rupee one or a rupee two coin. Find the expected value of a coin in that purse. So, if you take a coin, so what is the uh, expected value that you will get? So, again, it is basically related to money problem, right? So, money problem. So, we need to figure out what all different values of money that you can obtain. So, here again, the target is to think of what the random variable is all about. So, random variable is the uh, you can say various uh, various amount of money that you can uh, amount of money that you have in the bag right so l let's see how it goes around okay so before going for that you have four coins right four coins each could be rupee one or a rupee two so that means each coin has two options right so that means total options are 16 so there could be 16 possible uh, uh, cases of one and two combination where uh, you can fill in the places so let me start with case development so if i start developing the case let's start with the uh, four rupees one right so four rupees one coin so that means the variable xi here becomes what four because you, the total value that you people will have in the purse will be four rupees right what will be the probability that this will occur out of this 16 cases they are total 16 cases right so you want all of them to be one so there is only one particular case which occurs that is 1 by 16 right let's take then the next case that 3 rupees 1 plus 1 rupee 2 coin right so what will be the xi then here it will become 5 so in how many ways this could be done then 3 1 rupee coin and 2 rupees coin is 1 so see here I can start filling up the dashes in a way 1 comes here 1 comes here 1 come here and 2 comes here the next case could be 1 1 2 1 right other case could be 1 2 1 1 and the other case could be 2 1 1 right so there are how many cases 4 cases so the probability is 4 by 16 right or in a way you can say what you people are doing that out of 4 dashes you are selecting 3 4 1 so you can have easily said 4 c 3 is the favorable cases right so third option is that you have 2 rupees 1 plus 2 rupees coins of 2 
this is 4, this is 6, so expected uh, value is 6. What you are going to do? Yes, you have to select 4C2, that is 6. So 6 upon 16 will be the answer. Okay, next expected value that you people can have for the random variable is that 1, 1 rupee coin plus 3 rupees 2 coin. Right, so this value will give you 7. And again, how many ways can be done? It could be, you can say that 4C1, that out of these 4 dashes, you only want 1 dash for rupee 1 and the other one, 3, 4 will be for rupees 2. This will be again 4 by 16. Five fifth case could be the last one will be all four will be rupees two coin which gives you the value in the parcel as rupees eight. This is only one particular case. All the four places are occupied by two. You can say four C four or you can say four C zero. Zero is for with respect to one rupee. Two for four uh, C four with respect to uh, yes four uh, two rupee coins. So now you wanted the expectation right E X for which you will do something. You will multiply right. Now, now I hope the equation is clear to you guys 6 into 6 by 16 so you are just going to multiply all of them and then add of them so the summation of all of these values will give you the answer okay and if you solve this particular case the answer that you will be getting is 6 rupees right so this will be 6 so that means that rupees 6 is the expected value in the purse this is what I can say okay so this is how the expected expectation problems are being used in day-to-day uh, -day life problems and sometimes it becomes uh, difficult to understand what the question is asking that's the reason I have taken two separate problems based on uh, purse and uh, a lottery problem which by which you can understand the expectation problems okay so by this we come to the end of the chapter and uh, I have tried to cover each and every aspect of the chapter from both the uh, J mains aspect as well as from your boards. Uh, and if I talk about the J mains aspect, then I would say the lecture one is much more important because uh, questions which are based on probability uh, and permutation combination are rather more famous in uh, competitive examinations because they are peculiarly objective in nature. So it is uh, I would advise people who are preparing for J mains specifically to go about uh, permutation combination before you start with the PNC okay and the lecture 2 is much more oriented towards your board preparation so the topics like uh, probability distribution random variable uh, uh, binomial distribution table and all this stuff uh, is more inclined towards board but yes they could be asked in J mains also right so I'll, as usual I'll be sending the worksheet but I would like to focus on uh, NCRT a lot for this particular chapter with regard to your J mains so if you are targeting uh, J mains, J mains is your target. I strongly advise you guys to do NCRT questions by heart, right? So do them like it's a Bible of this particular chapter for J mains. NCRT is a very good book for this particular chapter. Some brilliant questions are being involved here. In fact, uh, you it will be interesting for you that uh, some questions which are there in NCRT are even asked at IITJ in let's say pre-2000 eras so they've taken some very good questions in the NCRT solve the complete NCRT so it will actually help you at both the levels that it will help you for your boards plus it will help you for your J mains apart from that I'll send you the worksheet plus the worksheet more than sufficient believe me you do not require any other stuff more than sufficient if time permits you can do it I would not say anything against it but yes I, from me it is more than sufficient to do this activity okay for the NCRT videos as usual you can just go on to the channel and watch the respective video for the respective uh, question okay so I see you tomorrow with a new topic altogether till then good night keep learning